The meshed gears are subjected to the couple moments shown. Determine the magnitude of the resultant couple moment and specify its coordinate direction angles. So these gears are meshed. You can consider this assembly here like a rigid body. All the forces are, are being rigidly transmitted from this shaft to this shaft with these gears meshed. So on this assembly, there's a couple moment from this shaft. Remember, moments or rotations are represented as vectors. The vector from the couple moment from this shaft is here, and the vector from the couple moment, couple moment of this shaft is here. These are couple moments. We can just do a pure vector sum and get the net resultant couple on this assembly. But this is the more general case. You're not going to be able to do, in general, just a scalar sum of the moments. These are vectors. So we'll need to represent this moment as a vector, represent this moment as a vector, add those up and get a resultant vector. But this is easy though. We're just, okay, let's represent this as a vector and then represent this as a vector and just sum them. Well, M1 is really easy. So what is M1? M1, the, the vector M1. It's 50K hat. Right? Remember, and so what does that mean? It's directed in the positive k hat direction. Use the right hand rule, put your, your thumb in the direction of the vector. The curl of the fingers represents the rotation. The rotation is about that axis, right? We don't need, th this is just there for illustration, this, this curled arrow here. You don't technically don't need that. The right hand rule tells you, it, like, like in other words, this is a, this is a pure vector. We, we don't need this, this curled arrow here. We could just put a pure vector as long as we know it's a moment. Or, or, or some sort of rotation, then we know we know what it is. We know the direction of that, that rotation. Okay, now M2, how do we represent this as a vector? Well, remember from the vectors in space video, there's different ways to represent the direction of vectors. Here they give these two direction angles, so we can use those direction angles to resolve this vector into the, into the components. So M2 is... So we've got you know there's the j hat component there's the i hat component and there's the k hat component and then well no it goes like it comes from this arrow it's there and then parallel to I hat like that. So we can see that we're going to be positive in the J and the in the I hat, and that's going to be equal to M two, so twenty cosine twenty adjacent over hypotenuse and then so now we've got this vector and then sine 30 that's i hat plus 20 cosine 20 and then no this is going to be minus Twenty cosine twenty cosine thirty j hat, and then plus twenty sine twenty k hat. So m two is twenty cosine twenty times sine 30 9.4 16.3 
Okay, and these are these vectors are in Newton meters. Okay, so there we go. Now just sum the moments. It's that easy. These are free vectors. Just sum them. M1 plus M2, that's MR. So 9.4I minus 16.3J plus 56.8K. Okay, now the coordinate direction angles, this is all from the vectors in space video where we learn how to do all this. So we need to get the, the, the magnitude of this vector first. So what is the magnitude of MR? Fifty nine point eight. Okay, so we know that fifty nine point eight cosine of alpha is equal to nine point four. This is all from the vectors in space video. If, if if you're not if you don't understand what we're doing, go watch the vectors in space video, and we also. In chapter two, we worked a lot of problems like this where we work with coordinate direction angles and, and vectors and, and whatnot. Chapter two in the vectors in space video. So 9.4. We're in degrees. Okay, so 81 degrees. That's alpha, and then it also, it did ask us for the magnitude of the resultant, so. And wait, hold on. Okay, I don't know what I'm thinking here. This is in the. I'm going crazy. This is in this direction. This is negative. So we're in negative i hat, negative j hat, and positive k hat. So this times negative 1. Ninety nine degrees. Yeah. Okay. Now fifty nine point eight cosine beta is minus sixteen point three, so beta is One hundred five point eight. Okay, now fifty nine point eight cosine of gamma is equal to fifty six point eight. So gamma. Eighteen point two. And there we go.